So welcome back to a new episode of The Sweetest Deal. This time I'm talking to uh, someone with the nickname The Italian Pirate. Uh, he used that for uh, a purpose of becoming a character and he did that well during the early years of 2001. A player who's been around for uh, 23 years as a professional poker player. Great history, great stories and uh, we're looking forward to hear his, uh, his discussion and his uh, about um, many different topics, football, video games, and so on. Uh, this uh, episode is presented together with our partners, Every Game Poker. Here we go with Max Pescatori. In the series of uh, The Swedish Deal, I talked to people that I interviewed many years ago, and now had, it has been time for uh, Max Pescatori. Max, uh, good to see you. How are you? Nice to see you too. Yeah, where are you? I'm in Vegas right now. Mm -hmm. uh, do, how much time do you spend in Vegas and how much time do you spend in Italy? Uh, it varies. It depends on the... I mean, with the pandemic, it was kind of different. Uh, I generally do around six months and six months, something like that. So it's kind of... I like the change. I like the... The traveling and the fact that, but I don't follow the 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 tour of uh, of poker anymore. When I play, I play mostly in Vegas uh, or at uh, King's Casino um, in Roswell, and that's about it. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, that's great. I mean, I I went to uh, I don't know uh, 150 tournaments or something. I remember in the early years, in 2005, when I got into it, you were one of the characters that were all always around. Uh, but you started even earlier. What what got in? You got you into poker in the late nineties. Yeah, I I mean I always had the passion for games, and uh, uh, in ninety four I moved to Vegas, and uh, my idea was to uh, learn how to deal casino games, and then move back to Italy. And uh, and do that because uh, being a croupier is very ambitious in Italy was at the time. Now it's a little bit less, but it was an amazing moment for for that kind of job. And they used to make a ton of money, but it was also uh, a cool job to have. And um, uh, because it's exclusive, there is only four casino in Italy. Well, five, but four four city with it. And so that was my idea because. My idea was if I have a job where uh, I actually gamble, even if I'm the one that has the house, it's a good job. And so that's what I thought to do. And then when I came here, then things happen. I kind of move uh, to Vegas and uh, uh, by playing poker on the side, which I always played poker even earlier, but playing poker on the side, I kind of discovered the concept of being a pro which was like something strange to me, like strange to a lot of people probably in the late 90s. And, uh, and then just um, I worked a little bit and then uh, left my job and said, let me try to do just this for a living. And I never looked back. So I turned pro in 99. If, in fact, even if the couple of, first couple of years, I kind of burned through my bankroll that I built working. But uh, not because I was losing, but I wasn't winning enough and the expenses, you know, it's the yeah. problem. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, uh, I stayed in poker and 2005, 2004, it was kind of cool. It was the first video game came out and uh, I was uh, I had a good agent and got me into this video game. And so that was kind of uh, the, where it started. So I got invited to places and. And, uh, and and that was a, a really good time uh, and during that period, Yeah, was, was traveling it, around. Yeah, was it intentional because you had this nickname, the Italian Pirate or something? Was it something that, yeah, you, yeah, exactly. was it something that you thought of to, to be invited to the games and, and to, 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 uh, to, to build these characters to be more popular? Yeah, I mean, at the beginning, what happened was I, <clears throat> there was this tournament here at Plaza, which was a, called the Ultimate Poker Challenge. And one day my hair were a mess. So I had this bandana, Italian bandana, and I put it on. And I made like third place. So I said, well, I'm not superstitious, but I'm putting it tomorrow too. And I finished like fourth. And uh, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to start using it. And then there... 
can I don't remember if someone probably say, hey, you know, bandana like pirate. Eh? And I say, yeah, but I'm Italian, Italian pirate. Then I went to search and they actually used to have Italian pirates. They're not famous as other pirates, but there were some uh, in the history, some, uh, and I say, oh, why not? Uh, and so I think people of the, um, there was uh, the, the great and uh, unlucky Chad Brown that uh, was one of the main uh, commentator. We, right. He was a great player, but he was also the commentator there. And so they start using that and uh, kind of a stick to me. And uh, of course, to have a character, it's always good because people recognize you. And uh, um, and in fact, I think the fact of the character, because I didn't have the titles yet in 2004, got me uh, the deal with the Activision, I believe, was the, the company. So it made sense. They even put me on the cover because of the, the bandana. So yeah. uh, not on the top cover, but on the back cover. I mean, it was like four only players and it was me, in it, which for what I accomplished since then, <laughs> it was a little bit even too much because I I won only a few small tournaments. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, that got me going and, uh, and it kind of stick to it. Then I always try to change kind of my hair, my style, because I like um, change. I mean, I couldn't play <laughs> 20 years later with a bandana. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Doyle can do it with a cowboy hat, but I can't. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, but it's I interesting. coloring my hair and the things. Yeah, I remember it was interesting because those days were really interesting where character was, was so important when all the brands came up and the boom came through and and yeah. and, uh, and you were able to get really good deals. When did, what was your first professional poker deal? Was it, was it with PokerStars? No, no, I've never been with PokerStars and I don't like them. So <laughs> was it was it it was full tilt poker, no. right? The first one was a very small one, it was classic poker which was a small side that just started in and it was an affiliate deal, which was good because um, it kind of was the first understanding of how affiliates work and uh, how to get players and, and you get a little piece of the rake, but, you know, by bringing them to the site. And, but that lasted a very short time because uh, I don't know what kind of problem. I mean, the surge was usual with classic poker, but then it kind of faded right away. I mean, when you're a skin, it kind of happens sometimes. I mean, you, they change deal and, and so on. But then I got a really good deal with the uh, World Sport Exchange. And it was cool because I had, I was the only one sponsored by them. So we went to London to do a tournament and they will introduce me to now as in the face of World Sport Exchange. And it was really cool. Uh, and they, the guy had uh, the, the main, I mean, the main uh, owner uh, was uh, really brilliant. Uh, and uh, he, I remember he spent like, he did a $2 million guaranteed in London uh, on a river. He hired like, uh, it, we had two day event. We had free food for everybody. Um, there was, uh, and the two million, and by the way, they had like 300,000 shortfall, but he didn't care. But he spent, I think, like almost half a million of other stuff just to make the, um, uh, the, the whole tournament a great thing. And it was a great event. Yeah. And uh, when, when, also when was he this, was the one When was this? Yeah. I think it was 2005. Mm. I really think it was 2005. Mm. Um, because 2006, then I was sponsored by Doyle. But 2005, then he had some problems, I think, with the law because of uh, it was a Caribbean sports book. And the, at that time, uh, they were pursuing, um, you know, charges even. And so even 2005, he came and he sponsored the car player. Uh, they had a big event in Hollywood in car player. And, uh, and so they like had the top 10 player they had brad garrett which is uh yeah yeah has, the actor uh, he's a comedian and he's uh yeah and in vegas he has his own show at mgm so he was uh the one like doing a roast of all the players which was really funny uh, yeah. of, uh, so many things and so it was a really fun because it was at the beginning so a lot of excitement a lot of uh, money put into the industry and uh, probably uh, even more money than now because of 
the because it wasn't illegal, it was just there was no law and they didn't think about it. Sports book was illegal, but not poker, uh, you know, during those times. But then later on, it came full tilt and etc. And then they had the Black Friday. But yeah. until 2005, that's when I think it started. Well, no, full tilt started a little bit before, but it exploded later. Yeah, yeah. It was such a, a, a speedy curve once it, the boom came through and everyone played online oh, poker yeah. all over the world. So it was good to be part of something where you could gain. What, what was? Did you make more money from uh, the business or from playing uh, when you did that during those years? So the, the sponsorship were not that big there. I mean, my first really good sponsor was Full Tilt. Uh, before, they used to kind of stake you into tournaments. But Full Tilt, same thing. Stake me, but if you don't win, you were not making any money. They, the good thing about Full Tilt that they would give you bonuses because you go on TV. Right. So they were very generous on that. Um, but, I mean, my breakthrough of sponsorship were when I when Italy... Um, pass a law, and so the the the, the first online place in Italy um, had me as uh, their ambassador, and that's where uh, good sponsorship came in, and uh, and we did so many things in Italy. I mean, this is something that, of course, only Italians maybe know, but. We did an incredible job in Italy. If you go on YouTube, you can probably still find some of my um, advertising. Uh, that I mean, some commercial. And I mean, one in particular, it's amazing because it's done from a awarded director. And it's better than a, a clip of a movie. It, it's incredible. I'll show you later on. I didn't think about it. But but that that was such a such a great, great commercial. Yeah. And in Italy, we had such a giant... If you think about the surge around the world, in Italy, even more. I mean, I remember things that happened, like free roll of uh, 10,000, okay? And because of the servers, we will say, okay, we're going to open it at um, 10 o'clock at night, the free roll. Or no, maybe 8 o'clock at night, okay? And we would go like 8 o'clock, it, it would be like, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 10,000 people, which was the cap, sold out at 8.04. And you're like, what? <laughs> you had 10,000 people in four minutes registering. And we were like, because I was also part of, because of my experience that I had with affiliates, with the, with Doyle's room. And so I was part of actually uh, the whole, um, the company. I mean, yeah. I was sub sponsor play, but I was helping uh, doing all this stuff. And, and we were like looking at each other. How can it be possible? I mean, mm. In four minutes, ten thousand people. And it was incredible. I mean, the, the was it site, only for Italians? It was only for Italians. You had to register in a certain way, so with your so Italian social security, and so tax ID practically. And uh, it was incredible. the The company sold two years later for like two hundred. 210 million, I think, or mm. 110 million, something like incredible. Mm. And for a, a, you know, a gaming site of, of one nation. But uh, yeah, the, 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 the rake that they were raking, it was incredible. And, and uh, you know, it, it was such a, such a fun time because yeah. in a, a, there was, I mean, in Italy, they had game show where they had, I have a clip of a game show the most popular game show in Italy, where they have a question about me. <laughs> like, how can that be possible? My mother was watching, and she called me and said, you know, I think they just, did you have a question about you? <laughs> and I was like, really? Yeah, I want to see it. And, and I have the clip on my Facebook. Was it, was it like Jeopardy or something like that? No, it's, uh, we call it the Heredita. It's the one that they have the four question. Mm -hmm. And they have like uh, a number. So the question was, in which year Max Pescatori won the, um, uh, the, the uh, his first bracelet? And uh, and then there was the four year. And what, the guy is it? Is it who years. wants to be a millionaire or something like that? No, because it was there was 
No, I, I don't think so. Never I mind, might never be mind. Just yeah, yeah, it was just one, a game show, uh, but that's but funny. But it was, it was the most popular. I mean, they were they were doing that before. I mean, in Italy, it's classic. Everybody eats at seven thirty and evening. So that one was the show at eight o'clock. So or seven thirty, something like right before the the news. Yeah. So it was hugely popular. My mother was watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, well, <laughs> since you since the boom was so strong in Italy and and you were so busy with promoting poker in Italy, you must have been one of the most famous people in Italy for a while, more or less, because uh, the Absolutely. poker was so big. If I go in a cab in Italy, often the cab driver will say, hey, Max Pescatori. So it's the same thing here. I have the same popularity in Italy that Daniel and Phil and um, and, uh, and Dor have in the United States. Hmm. Um, I mean, I, I remember one time I was in London and we were doing an event for B-Win, which was the same company just uh, because B-Win took over the company, Joko Digitale, which was the one, the army. So we were doing things together. We were in a cab going to a place with, uh, and I was with Phil Almont and two other B-Win uh, guys. We came out of the cab and this guy comes, Max Pescatoria, can you take a picture? And Phil was like, <laughs> <laughs> because it's impossible to think that, but I still mentioned, and it was his uh, his agent there, and he was making fun of him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he asked Phil to take the picture, yeah? <laughs> no, he didn't ask him, but... Uh, but he, he was used to be the one that people wants to take pictures with. Right, he said, how do you recognize him and not me? And so, yeah, he did it you didn't care for this guy Ivy. Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's because Italy. It was all focused on Italians. It's normal. It's yeah. kind of like in every country is very localized. Uh, the, you know, the 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 sports figures. You know? Of course, that's of why course. yeah, sports doesn't put the same player on every country. You go yeah. in a different country and they have a different uh, uh, player on top. Yeah, because. Of no, it's more popular. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, well, well, you were quite into the mixed games quite early, weren't you? You played a lot of mixed games, tournaments and so on, when, when, when it was possible, like the World Series. Yeah, I think the moment that I switched to mixed game, I mean, I always liked mixed games, but I thought for to have a longer career, I kind of like mixed game better. And my first mentor was uh, Walter Farina, which was the first guy that won a bracelet for Italy, I think in 2004. And then I became a friend with Jennifer Harmon, which was a mixed game player. So I did play No Limit. I actually won my first bracelet in No Limit. But then, like, kind of the people that I talked to play mixed games. And and I thought about it. And, you know, it made, it made more sense to play mixed game because I thought, it will keep my interest into learning different things and and have not one thing to play. And remember, I mean, I became pros in 99. No Limit did not exist as a game in uh, in the casinos. There was Limit Hold'em. I started playing Limit Hold'em, mm. not No Limit. didn't exist. There was no games mm. except for World Series, you know, and uh, some tournaments around. But as a cash game, it didn't exist. So, you know, turn, you, it's very hard to make a living with the tournament. So you had to play cash game. And cash game, I I chose Omar Hilo, Stad, Stad Hilo. And so, and then uh, it's kind of something that I almost abandoned, no limit. I still play it occasionally at the World Series and some other time, but I like much better the other games. Is it also... I mean, is it your favorite, like the Poker Players Championship type games, eight game, where you have mixed games because it's more interesting and more fun? Is that important? It is. Uh, and I mean, I do have a understanding of the games better. I mean, there is no doubt about that. Every kind of stud games I feel at the top, no matter who I have in front, instead of No Limit, I know I don't. There is different. There is more study, no limit. There is, um, uh, and it's just more fun to me. I mean, uh, I I really didn't like the the no limit new generation headphones. Not talking to anybody. It's not a good for business. It's not good for anybody. It's good for their own business, but uh, at the end, you have to interact with players uh, yeah. with with the fish, how they call them, you know. Yeah. But 
and they don't. I mean, they all might make fun of uh, a lot of them make fun of the players that is no good, but you don't. That the in mix game you entertain him. He's the one that pays the bills. So, yeah. uh, um, and uh, uh, it's it's something that I learn early, be, but but I kept you know the same way. And in fact, if you look in, in Europe, at one point there was almost all no limit cash games. Now Oma is actually more popular than No Limit when you go to a festival. And that's because in Omaha, you kind of talk, you have to talk. Mm. And often you're 40, 60 percent. It's not like a, an aggressive way that you take away a lot of parts. So it's more entertaining and it's, more, it's better for the casual. And, yeah. uh, and so, yeah, I mean... That's one of the reasons why I like yeah. it. What, what was one of the reasons maybe also when you had the deal, when you made TV tables, because playing the, at the World Series, for example, playing in a field of 120 players, being on the TV table and the final table was so much bigger than to play in a tournament with 2,000 people. I, I mean, I don't think so, because at the time, if you look at the fields of, I mean, no limit fields, the one that I won, I have like a, it was 1,290 entries. I have like a frame with uh, on my room. Um, but if you look at the OMA high low events, we we're 600 people. So it was only double. So, so recently it came that some tournaments are like 5,000 and stud is, you know, 700, uh, yeah. 600, the 1,500 I'm talking about, you know. Yeah. So, I don't think that was the reason. I think it was purely entertainment. Uh, I wasn't... Uh, also because often the mix game were not going on TV. Right. So uh, it depends on which events. The 1500 generally, they didn't. Yeah, right. Uh, so right. Um, I, I didn't think I thought about it that way. I just thought about it as more fun. Yeah. And it's also, what am I ad adapt? What's better for me? And uh, I'm always better. If you invent a game... And you take a hundred people. I'm sure I'm in the top ten to understand the game first. So, in Vegas, often they invent new games. Now we're playing Drama Ha High, Drama Ha Doogie. I kind of get the games before anybody wrote a book about it. So yeah. it's a, it's an edge for me, and it's fun. Uh, so yeah, I, I you think know, we're actually, playing now a game. Yeah, I think actually we're playing a game now. Oh, you, you talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the Drama Ha. Uh, which was uh, yeah, it's uh, it was invented in Sweden actually. It was oh, yeah, yeah, cool. in the club they they uh, they yeah yeah. So so, uh, but that's an interesting game. So the more complicated it is, that's what all the guys like Doyle and Chip Reese and all the guys used to do to get an edge on the casual player and the rich guys <laughs> coming up, right? And but they're the rich guys that they're good of in their job and they might be amazing minds. They enjoy better playing something different right. exactly. because uh, purely one thing, it becomes boring. And so to get the entertainment, uh, I mean, I know many of the uh, more games, invent more games, better. And, uh, mm. So they're happier. Yeah, so I was interested. Now we, we are, <clears throat> we're doing a version of um, uh, not Drama Hub, but Badusi. Mm. You know, Badusi is kind of popular. Right? We're doing a version where you can never change one card either is pat two three four or five so all the dynamics are all different so we're uh -huh. trying to figure out what to do because what if you get a a medium badugi right away but a pair what do you do yeah uh, ah, change that's interesting. Two, throw away so it, all the dynamics are different that's what i like you know where, where do you mean uh, are you talking about vegas now where do you play usually when you play in vegas the cash games the the mixed games that you talk about usually? So now the game that I play, it's uh, all a resort world. So the new casino that they opened uh, maybe a couple of years ago. Oh, maybe no, less, I think. Uh, so it, we, were, we played a win for a while, and now we're playing a resort world only. Uh, they have... It's... it's Unfortunately, at this I don't like in Vegas and all the United States, almost all the games became like private of a certain level. Mm. So, but it's kind of easy going. Uh, I think like 
uh, over 98 percent of uh, percentage of people get accepted in the game so it's kind of private but it's not really i mean uh, uh, it's only a few you know so we play there and we have a chat so they say okay who want to play today okay me i mean i mean i mean so that part is nice because you go and you know when this starts a game instead of the past you have to go put the name on the list maybe you wait two hours then the game doesn't start you go home or you have to play something else uh, the bad part is by having a private game like that, then you don't you get less occasional people that walk by and say, "Let me sit down." Uh, yeah. Something that we we had before, we still do, but it's different. Yeah, yeah. Well, are there any well-known faces? Maybe you don't need to tell, but or want to tell. But are there any familiar I mean, faces that play the game? I rather not say names, but. I all if you look at like let's say the last uh, five years of players that win uh, bracelet in mix events, a lot of them they play in that game. Yeah, yeah. Or, or they play the one higher uh, because they we play eighty one sixty, um, and there is another one that is three and six hundred in the same place or and kind of the same. Well, I can mention one because he, I'm sure he has no problem. He moved here and. Eric one two three Eric Sangstrom yeah yeah the salmon <laughs> yeah the salmon yeah from back in the day yeah, yeah I know Eric uh, yeah he also yeah, he enjoys here. those games yeah he plays higher but uh, but he comes and play occasionally I don't know how the frequency because they have a I mean the way they treat us there is unbelievable they have their own private room away from the poker room with like all advantages and we still have a an amazing room where we can block we have like TVs and we block like even the screen so I mean they treat us so well and the rake is so small and we get all kinds of advantages I mean well I mean so. do, do they uh, what do the, the, the place see the as advantages for to have you there if the rake is low is do you spend money at the restaurant and or, or do there they is want no you doubt there? They, they want you there this is one of the thing I think and often they are missed uh, from casinos. They think because of the way uh, casinos think in the wrong way is uh, the poker room manager of some place thinks of how much money they have to make in that poker room, not the benefits of the casino. So, but when you get people that play, they bring 10,000 to play every day, they have a box there with the money that they earn. Occasionally, you will have someone that takes the money and goes to the pit and lose everything. So, and I know several stories of people losing millions uh, from the Bellagio. So, at the Bellagio. So, I mean, uh, you don't have to look at today's how much we gain, but what's the potential? And for sure, restaurants is one of the things. Uh, all poker players are, are, they play a certain high um, game, you know, they always eat in good restaurants and not there to so that's volume that you create for the room uh, for the i mean for the casino and so i think they see it that way and that's the right way to do it uh it's hard to know at the end um, because i don't have but i'm sure it's a very good thing yeah yeah i i i believe that okay that's interesting because i was also into mixed games and we talked about watching games because during the boom everyone played no limit hold them and all the TV games are no limit hold them. Even it wasn't even even the Poker Players Championship. I don't remember the name of it before. The final table was only no limit hold them. Do you remember that, Max? Yeah, they did that for a couple of years, and it was. I mean, then they stopped because people say it's just. I understand that you want to do that, but it makes no sense to do that. So it's okay to put no limit into the Poker Player Championship, but you can't just have no limit at the at the final table. Uh, although I have to say I dislike No Limit, but I do like it in a in, in a in tournament form. Ah, in a tournament. No, form. no. I I mean I like it in the mix too because it brings No Limit players playing mix games. So I do like when there is No Limit and Paul Gaminoma in a mix game because I know a lot of times uh, you know really good pros they come to play. But they don't understand the other game, so they have edge on me on those, and I have edge on them on that. So it brings the number of the player higher. So yeah, I like the nine game mix. Mm. Um, but 
but and and in general, I do like no limit. But uh, the problem is, I like no limit turbos because I don't like when someone tank for three minutes, and uh, and I'm you know I fold it and, and I have to. It's okay if I'm in a hand, but it's just so boring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand. So I like no limits is the best one. I mean, uh, if you will look at, I mean, the online poker and so on has been uh, a bit uh, tricky with uh, with Black Friday and so on. But let's say there's a young player coming up and what, being interested in playing mixed games and trying to find a way. Because if you're a smart guy, you can learn the, the mixed games and have fun and, and, and do good in those. Where should you go? Where, what would you uh, say to a guy who's 23 and want to test out the mixed games? How, how should he, he go about that or she? Uh, um, well, in Vegas, there is some other smaller game. There is actually a game there, a resort, which I believe it's 816. So <clears throat> they have three levels. Um, so they do have a mixed game, which is small. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I'm hoping that GG Poker comes up with some mixed games because they don't even have Omar High Low. And I understand they come up with a lot of interesting games like the all in -all folder, but they do not offer any mixed games. And, you know, Stars killed it a few years ago when they decided to, um, for 10, 20 and over, they wouldn't give one single point to players. So they right. killed completely the action. That was insane. I mean... Uh, yeah, that was insane for sure. Okay, so, so that's interesting though, but um, outside, being in Vegas is such, for poker players, there's always games going on and so on. Do you have, what do you do when you're not playing poker in Vegas? Um, I mean, I like to play machines. <laughs> so, really? Um, do you yeah, really? I'm a semi-professional machine player. <laughs> is there anyone who's not like that? <laughs> oh, there is a lot, and it's it grew in an incredible way. Uh, so, can, can you tell me how uh, that works? It, how does that work, really, man? There is like small bonuses, and there is uh, machines. They they went uh, from compared to people what they remember. They they you know it, when you are when you are a machine company, you always have to come up with something. So um, you have to come up with. Uh, Bonuses, interest in uh, engaging the players. So there is all kinds of things that you can engage the players with. So uh, I can tell you the first one that I've seen that it was uh, possible to make a profit on it. Uh, and then from there, there is a million version, different ways, more complicated. And so there was, uh, since uh, my last name is Fisherman, uh, so there was an IGT game where I had three reels. And he had a lead, and every once in a while in the reel would come a fish. So there was um, three different columns where the fisherman would put the fish. Once he reached 10, it would give you either 10 or $20 bonus. So if you find a machine where there was eight or nine, it was a value. Uh, mathematically, you were playing over 100% uh, of the machine. So that was like the first first version that I know about um, a machine where um, people could make money on it yeah. if you only play in that spot. So from then, there is a million versions. They always come up with different ones. And the good thing about Vegas, there is a million machine. And the good part about it is you can exercise. You have to walk around and look at machine machines. You walk around, which is an exercise, and so that's what I like. <laughs> it's good. And the other thing that I do a lot, yeah, yeah sorry. It, it's good for your physique to play machines then, so you get some exercise. That's funny. Yeah, yeah, go on. And I have a machine in Sweden that I like. I'm going to ask you off camera as if they have it there. If you go to the casino, <laughs> where, where are you located? In Stockholm. They have okay, a, good. They have a There's casino that, here. They have a casino in Stockholm. I'll send you to Scout, and uh, then in case I'll fly there to play that machine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting. Uh, so, so, the, uh, yeah, so are, are you alone in this, or do you have friends that do it? You do it together with, or is it just like an interest? Yeah, no, 
I have uh, several friends that do it, and, uh, you know, but uh, I kind of am alone to, I have one partner where we play together because sometimes plays are really expensive. I mean, you can lose uh, uh, seven, eight thousand or put seven, eight thousand in a machine to to hit something. And uh, I mean, there is even bigger, but I don't play really big, big uh, numbers, but. Um, yeah, that's that's one of the things that I like to do. And the other one that I started a couple of years ago, it's a NFT management game, and um, it's you buy players' cards, uh, which they are NFTs, and then you play them as a fantasy football, and you compete with all people around the world. So uh, it's kind of interesting uh, to. To, to, to do this because there's a lot of strategies a lot of, of similar to poker for a lot of uh, aspects and uh, so that's one of the things that I do is, is, uh, and is, it takes a lot of time I know that you are a pretty big Roma fan is that right? no Milan Milan sorry you're a Milan fan because I'm from Milan and uh, there ah, was said two teams yeah 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 of course it's Milan yeah 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 Milan uh, and a right card yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Frank Reichardt and the other and, Dutch guys, uh, Kulit. Yeah, Kulit. Uh, that, that's when I started. I was young and I went to see when they had the presentation. Berlusconi came with a helicopter uh, to present these players when he bought the team maybe a couple of years before he brought. Uh, yeah, Van Basten was Van part Basten, of it. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. What, do you, so, what do you think of the Swedish player Ibrahimovic? Well, of course, is uh, you know, it's one of. It depends if you believe in one god, then it's not him. But if you believe in multiple gods, then he's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's uh, he's uh, he's pretty popular in Milan, isn't he? He's the one that changed the course of Milan twice. First, when he was in Milan, uh, he's the one that actually changed changed everything. Then. And we won, I mean, not change everything because we were still winning a lot. But then it came and we kept winning. And then um, when he left, it was over. He left against with Thiago Silva. He went to PSG, which I don't think he had very good success, uh, Ibra, there. But uh, that was like the start of the fall of Milan, of AC Milan. And then when he came back, I think it was three years ago, it changed completely the... Um, the, the 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 point of views of all the players so it was really incredible for for the bench for the 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 spogliatoio has a, for, i mean all the players kind of felt different and milan had which had some horrendous season he changed again things and uh, and it's thanks to him that now milan is starting to get at the top they won the championship last year. Even if he wasn't incredible last year, he's behind um, as a, as like a second coach. Mm. So, and this year he he's still in. He has a big injury, but he's still in. He's still training. He's still on the bench uh, mm. often um, to to show players what to do and to mm. like. You know. Yeah, so, it's interesting yeah. to see sometimes to see all these big names and sometimes football players are a little bit of divas and, and, and they are uh, professional and believe in themselves. But when they look at Ibra, they, they go, yes, I listen to you. Like some kind of father for them or something. First of all, because he's scary. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. When he looks at you, you're like, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, but, but also because they know how good it is to, to kind of, you know, take the best out of you. Uh, so you know, in like he's he he went out spoken last year, I believe, uh, for Kulusevski. Yeah, and uh, he has no problem to tell what he think, and he's generally right. And he Kulusevski is an amazing player. He's twenty two, and he wasn't getting um, uh, like some. Uh, he was never getting to the national team. I think because of some uh, issues that they had, and and he came out and said, you know, you shouldn't have any issues, and you should. And right away he got, you know, in the national team. And he's, yeah. you know, he's doing a great, 
Uh, he's doing great in Tottenham. So yeah, yeah, I, I I saw the match where Richarlison was scoring twice in the Champions League, and and I was a bit worried that he will now replace Kulusevski. But I I'm not that worried. I'm afraid too. Yeah, it would be a shame if Kulusevski because Kulusevski was really popular in 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 Lazio and and Juventus. I think it was. Or was it Parma? Parma and Juventus. He was in Parma, then he got bought. In Juventus, and for some reason they never played him, and I was like, "Are they crazy? Never played this guy? He's amazing!" Eh? They send him to the Premier League, and when you send a player to Premier League, it generally doesn't do well from Italy to Premier League because they run faster, they're different. And instead, he exploded mm. last year. He had an amazing year, mm. but yeah, I'm worried because I have one of his card NFTs, <laughs> and it's an expensive card, and I'm worried now. I'm contemplating on selling him because I mean I just think he will not start all the time instead before it was uh, always Song um, Kuluzeski and Kane yeah. now with Richardson and he looked good and yeah. yeah it's a different role but they might change the way they play which I think is wrong too but you know Conte is a <laughs> I don't like him at all, but he's a good coach. So yeah, but uh, he he he's not hasn't been that most uh, aggressive offensive player. I mean, he comes from Italian no, no, from eighty two yeah. when he was the defensive was number one. So I think it's difficult for him to put all the four players on the pitch. Even if I think that yeah. would work too. Uh, yeah, I I mean I don't know the other guy the, the new Richardson uh, well so. I haven't watched him playing. They told me it's a different role, yeah. but I know that you cannot take out Song, which is one of the best players in the world, and he gets underrated just because he's Korean. Yeah. But um, and Kane, of course, know, is is, uh, is uh, Kane. You can't. So I don't know where you put the other one. So well, I guess I hope they change the way they play. But maybe but he play as a wing back or something, uh, Kulusevski, because he has yeah. good lungs. You know. Anyway, that's uh, it's interesting with the uh, football and. And uh, I hope the Italian Serie A will, will also uh, become even more popular again. What do you think? They're doing well now. They're, they're doing well. The only problem is uh, TV rights. Uh, in England, you have such an incredible income from TV rights. So they bought and they share more toward the, the teams. So you have... You know the 12, 13, 14 play team that make a lot of money, and uh, and you know just to mention, it's fair to mention. Uh, do you remember Tony Bloom? He of used course, to come to right? Yeah. right. He and you know he's the owner of Brighton. Brighton Hall and Albion. I know. Oh, it's incredible his story. Now they're like third in the Premier League, and yeah. he bought um, uh, he bought the Belgian team uh, um, Saint Galois. Uh-huh. Uh, Two years ago, from the second league, they went to first one and they almost won the league last year. They lost the last two games. Yeah. They finished second. So they're playing Europa League today. Yeah, that's amazing. No, I, I, I know that. Uh, uh, but they lost their, tra their trainer now. He goes to Chelsea. Graham Potter, you know. Oh, he did? Yeah, he did? Yeah. yeah, he left for oh, Chelsea. Oh, I didn't know. Uh, yeah. What do you mean? Like in, he quit? No, Thomas Tuchel got fired. So they, they hired Graham Potter as a coach. Oh, and yeah, I don't know who he was the coach of Brighton. Brighton. No, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So you think he quit the job in the se during the season to go to Chelsea? It doesn't. Yeah, yeah, they 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 announced him today. Graham Potter, uh, Chelsea bought him. Uh, just okay, that's true. They can buy him. Maybe yeah. they give fifty million, whatever. Yeah, and yeah then... to, to Brighton, yeah. and which was a shame because uh, Graham Potter was doing a great job. I think it's Brighton, if I'm not wrong. Graham Potter. Anyway, uh, it's it's a lot of things to talk about. Anyway, back to are you are you playing a lot of online these days, Max? Um, when I'm in Vegas, no, because uh, I'm happy to say that in the United States, which is crazy, at least in Nevada, there is only World Series of Poker dot com. Yeah. And as much as I like the World Series and I've always embraced the World Series, their software is crap and. Yeah. You know, and 888 has never made an update, I don't know in how many years. And it might be both's fault because maybe World Series don't want to pay more, so they don't give them a better software. 
but it's just crazy. I'm hoping that GG comes in to the to to United States, but it's difficult. And they they advertise sponsor World Series now two World Series in a row. So I'm hoping the move is to to do that. But they never enter any market unless they had a share liquidity. So it will be the first time they can do it because United States you have the possibility of doing it. But, but I mean, in the United States, it's just crazy. And so many things are, um, there is so much hypocrisy in a lot of things. Now, I don't know if you know, in California, they have this um, new, not that I'm going to go into politics, but because it's my industry. Of course. They have Proposition 27. I don't, I'm sure you don't know, but where in California, you cannot bet. Um, on sports, so they have a proposition 27. They have to vote on it if you can bet sports or not. And there is two campaign. One that says, of course, now you can bet legally and everything. And then there is the other one saying, oh no, this will dis- disrupt the income of the Indian reservations. And uh, you know, so California is full of casinos. Mostly, are mostly or all of them are Indian reservations. And they're actually campaigning against this, as this will be, uh, how do you say, deprimental toward their business. You're a gambling company. You have so much advantages as a tribe, as tribes, and so now you are against this. It's to me, it's just uh, so much hypocrisy. You know, mm. either you're for gambling or not. It's not mm. because you're a you're a vodka company then you advertise no gin is bad mm. no gin is not bad <laughs> it's the same yeah. thing that you guys do yeah just give people choice and and if not people bad anyway they just bet illegally yeah so what i where do i go to this is i mean legalize poker everywhere in the united states what's the big deal if you yeah. legalize sports book then legalize poker yeah, of course and they don't do it then i don't know what's going on they have all kinds of stupid rules I, 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 yeah, I, I mean, I mean, uh, during the two thousands, when the poker boom came through, and it was just everyone played. It was the same in Sweden and the same as you said in Italy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a people's favorite pastime, as they say. What are you going to do today? We're going to meet. We're going to have dinner. We're going to play some poker at home. We're going to discuss some poker. It was just something that was re- really tough uh, for the government to take away from the American people. I think. Yeah, and. Uh, I mean, you protect the people. Italy had a great, great way that they protected people. They didn't have cash games at the beginning for the first, like, I think, four years. And they had tournaments up to 250 mm. with no rebuys. So no rebuys. You could have rebuys if it was lower, but you can only spend 250 in one tournament. That was a great way. We had a huge surge because people wouldn't lose the money quickly. And tournaments, you play for a long time. So mm. if you're afraid that people destroy themselves, then do something like that. Mm. Put a cap on what you can lose per day. I mean, yeah. it's hard because some people can lose 200 per day. Some people could lose 10,000. So it's hard for the government to decide that. Yeah. But you just put a cap and it works well. So yeah. if that's the problem, then do something like that. Yeah, I, I think also... Uh, so many people, I mean, the main share of all the people that played wanted to play a tournament for, let's say, $1 or $10 just to do something, sit and play yeah. and enjoy the, enjoy the poker. It's not just to make money because like 90% of everyone knows that they are probably going to spend the money, but they enjoy it. So, so yeah, yeah, and uh, and occasionally you will win uh, a big tournament, even for $10, yeah. you win 3000 Therefore... All the ten dollars that you put, you don't really feel it. But when you win three thousand, it's you feel it, and yeah. so that changes. And then you, uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, I agree on that too. I, I, just, I remember it came all the way from from uh, from MoneyMaker, of course. But I mean, during the EPT years when we were traveling all over Europe and also the state, uh, I mean, to Bahamas and so on, and we were doing all the tournaments where people qualified online, like getting, yeah, yeah. getting the dream exactly. come true, which is. Uh, you spend one dollar or twenty five dollars, you get a ticket to a live tournament and, a, and an event for life. You know, even if you don't win it, it's just a great thing to get out there. Anyway, we'll see yeah, where yeah. it goes. Do you think there's there's hope for poker to come back to somewhere near where it was fifteen years ago? 
or 10 years? I mean, uh, the World Series are, they just had, it was like almost the biggest one ever. So yeah. poker is great. And not only that, I, you know, po live poker during the World Series, it's never been better. So if you come here during that period, you have a choice of win uh, Golden Nuggets, I think, um, Arya, uh, MGM was doing it. So every day you had five, six tournaments, I mean, five, six venues where they had multiple tournaments. So right. as live, there is so many players like we never see, we ever see. I mean, and, and huge fields everywhere. So... I mean, maybe it's because there is no online, but I don't think so. I think it would grow the popularity again even more if you have an online. So yeah. um, online is difficult. I mean, you need share liquidity. One good thing is I really think GG Poker is amazing and is as good as Full Tilt at the top, if not better. So I'm hoping they keep the right track they hire the right people because when they get too big, then you get problems and you hire people because they're um, amazing businessmen, but they're, they don't know nothing about poker. So right. I hope they hire the right people and they keep doing the right things. So recently, they did a couple of things that they were ridiculous, but it could happen. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so. of course. We'll, we'll see. We'll um, see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting to see how it develops. Because Star is done. They have no chance. They they just uh, now are a horrible company, I think. And, and they they absolutely switch to make money in sportsbook. And, which, it's okay. Uh, but but the, the games and all, they just they lost it. I mean, they just brought back EPT. And that was one of the biggest ever live. Mm, uh, the Barcelona, Barcelona. yeah. <clears throat> so... Um, but they kept cutting, cutting, cutting things. So we'll see if they try to get a little bit of the business back. I mean, you always need to have two big players. When they bought Full Tilt, it was a horrible day for the poker industry because they bought the only software that was comparable to them. Mm. So you had to wait for someone else to come up. And yeah. They killed the, the software. Um, yeah. And uh, so now with GG is a different story. Uh, party tried, and they're very active in the poker community, yeah, but their software is too much toward pros. Yeah, uh, it's not it's not good for recreational players. So. I, I, I talked to Negron about that. I think that's one thing that he said that maybe some of the pros and more experienced players find silly, but you have to talk to the main share of the players. Who well, likes the to, to be able to, to, you know, to, to like the small details, to order a drink or, or have Daniel dance across the table or whatever it is, you know? Well, that one maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't mean that. But you mean, I mean, all the details. <laughs> no, but I know. The, the concept is great. You got to have things to, I mean... They have things that they sh should improve, but overall, I think they're a great company. And the good thing about it is one owner at the top. Yeah. One Korean owner at the top. And so he makes a decision. And it's a good thing because if it's a big corporation, they keep changing maybe the guy on top as the CEO. And then it comes people from Coca-Cola. Hmm. Yeah, but what, he knows nothing about the industry, so he does things that they're bad, as I mentioned yeah. before. Yeah, 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 I see, I see. It was really nice talking to you, Max. I mean, there's so many things to talk about. Poker has been around in the way we saw it, even since 1994 you started in poker, or even earlier. I, no, 1999 I turned pro. I yeah. mean, uh, to start playing poker, I used to play... Uh, during the military, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. 1990, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. or even earlier, but... Yeah, you, I mean seriously. I mean, yeah, it's nothing you regret, right? You, 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 you. Uh, no, no, it's a great life. I travel the world. I, I mean, I have one of the best job in the world, and uh, he allow me. Yeah, I mean, I could have been different. Maybe I, I could have done something different in my life. But at the end, it's the, you know, you're a footballer. It's amazing. But then you 35, you you have like what to do. So it's poker is good thing is that I can do it until whenever you know I might slow it down 
I always find other things that I like, so that's a good thing about me. And, yeah. and I, it's still gaming. It's still mm. I come from video games, so maybe that's the base of of uh, of strategy and things like that. So yeah. what, we'll what, what 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 is uh, some of your favorite video games throughout the years? Because we are quite a few that like video games. Well, I, I mean, uh, in in Italy was the first extremely popular was Sensible Soccer. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a, an amazing game. I mean, of course, before I had all kind. Of, they had this company called Cinemaware, which, uh, I mean, if you go on Wikipedia, you will see they had, like, some amazing games at the beginning. But there is so many games. And, uh, but, you know, uh, later is FIFA, of course, when EA Sports start making better and better and better football games. But, uh, you know, I like I, I always like sports game better. So hmm. my probably my mo favorite game as um, to go to a gaming room it was Hyper Olympics or Hyper Olympics. Yes, yeah. What, what, it used to be a uh, six, you know, hundred meter and yeah, and then you have to like press fast. I I remember that, and you had long jump. Yeah. You have pole vaulting. I jump. Yeah. Had, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. I had, my friend used to do the pace, and I did the jump. <laughs> <laughs> Why <Wow>, cheater? <laughs> Two people. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's great, Max. Maybe, maybe. I mean, there's plenty of things to talk about, and 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 I mean, you're not going to quit playing poker before you die, right? I don't think so. I don't well. think so. I mean, um, I like it, so you know. And but you know, I'm gonna live a hundred, so. Still at 50 years before or something. Yeah, at least. Yeah, at <laughs> least. Yeah, that's good. Max, let's talk again sometime further down the road. And maybe cool. we meet out there. Are you going to any live events uh, soon? I'm going to go to World Series of Poker Europe uh, in uh, Rosvadov and King's Casino. Yeah, I, go. I, I do some business with them. So um, I'm going there for sure. I like that place. I like... Um, uh, the, the the casino they treat people well and they have uh, uh, the games are the tournament area is beautiful so I think it's one of top in Europe if not the top and mm. so yeah maybe, I will go there maybe if we meet there I'm, we we gonna coming? sit down and have a talk I, I hope so I'm not sure yet but yeah, I hope so have a drink yeah that's good <laughs> okay let's talk again sometime and uh, and uh, I'll I'll send you a message when I get this out okay. Cool. Thank you, Ricard. Perfect pronunciation. Oh, Ricard. Ricard. Oh, Ricard. Yeah. Max Pescatori, uh, right now in Las Vegas. Uh, usually he spends his time in Vegas or at home in Milan in Italy. It was really nice talking to him, and I'm happy to do this talk uh, together with our partner, Every Game Poker. Uh, until next time, bye.